Welcome back to IP Farms. Well, it's another day here in the shop, uh, back on Daz 3000. Seems like it's been forever since I've been able to work on it. Uh, it's been over a week since I've been here. Actually, I haven't been here but about one day in two weeks. Uh, been really busy at the daily. The weather's just been awful. We had some uh, heavy rain and wind and stuff and cold temperatures. Just haven't really felt up to it. Um, but I think on the last video you saw the 3000 here, uh, we stopped because I was needing the shims and I got those ordered from a local dealership. They did come in. Uh, the Saturday I was here when my cousin was doing the grade, me and my buddy uh, got these shims in, checked in play, we got it set right. So I'll break the camera down here, show you a little bit about that. I'm gonna try to put some uh, info about putting these uh, brake shoes back on. So we'll see how much we get on this one and uh, go from there. Don't wanna bore you guys too much with all this repair work, but I ha have had a few people request to see some detailed videos on the process. So I'll do the best I can. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up or not, but uh, you might can see the new shiny uh, shim in there. That one's 30 to 32 thousandths. Uh, the tractor came originally with two 15s and this, I believe this is uh, seven or nine thousandths, I can't remember. But this is what it is that I had to get. Uh, quite expensive for just that metal shim, but that's what you need to shim up the rear axles like they're supposed to be so we got the end play somewhere in a happy medium i want to say it's around seven thousand it's supposed to be four to twelve so uh we're in the good there i'm gonna see if i can remember how to get these brakes back together so uh we'll get over there on a the bucket turn the camera on and uh make the mistakes together i guess stay tuned all right guys had to stop for a second had you all set up we were getting ready to get after it um brake shoes brake hardware brake pliers had a good camera angle going. I thought, well, I better stop and look. It's been about two, three weeks since I've done this. See how the springs were oriented. I always take pictures, especially on drum brakes. My memory's not what it used to be. So I'm gonna show you that in a second, but notice in the camera, the red jack stand underneath, nothing has moved. Above here, there's the fender. So top, bottom, back, front. All right, now I'm gonna bring the picture on my phone around. You guys that know drum brakes, there's the adjuster at the top of the screen, which is the top of the tractor. You see the red jack stand underneath, so the connector bar is on the bottom. Brake shoe on the front, brake shoe towards the back, okay? Put the phone down. Grab a brake shoe. Oh, that's not right. What in the world have I done? I started stressing. Well, keep in mind, there's a brake rod right there. So the backing plate is exactly how it has to be on the tractor. So we do this number. Oh wow, look, there's an oval hole for the adjuster. There's a piece for the connector. Brake shoes top and bottom. There's the cam. So I sit back for a second and scratch my head. What What is wrong? Whoever did this work before, I know somebody had been in here. They put the backing plate on. can only go on one way due to the actuator. So they had the adjuster up here, which there's nothing. There's no oval hole. It's over here. This piece I showed you is actually the one I welded. This comes off separate with the studs on it. They had it spun down to here so the brake shoes were connected down here went up to the adjuster so basically what that means is that this actuator right here was doing absolutely nothing it was behind the brake shoes because there was a shoe right here <laughs> i knew it didn't have very good brakes i attributed it to the gear oil on there i've never seen the likes of that in my entire life never especially not on a tractor wow Okay, we're gonna try this with the camera placed right there. Um, I've gotten over the <laughs> the whole deal we spoke of earlier about the way this is put together. Um, I'm right, and they were for sure wrong. But uh, I've got the brake shoes together here with the top adjuster and the spring in it. It's like uh, holding on to four bananas with Vaseline all over your hands, if you will. Um, but it sure makes getting the spring in there a lot easier. So I'm gonna try to get this around there and hopefully get the shoes 
over this and then I can get the pins in the back to hold them and I get the rest of the springs in. Oh look, there's my phone, imagine that. Uh, but we'll see, probably end up knocking you guys over. But uh, I don't think anyone needs a tutorial on putting the brakes, the spring together. But if so, I will go over that here in just a second. Well, I had to turn the camera off for one. I need 15 hands doing this, and it's been years since I've messed with drum brakes and these springs. My phone's steady going off over here behind me, so apologize for that. But anyway, what you want to do is get the, um, so we had this, the spring and adjuster in, kind of holding this in the shoe, and then they're supposed to go up and over like so. But you've got the bottom one will kind of hang. But I see that with these top ones, you've got to kind of get the pin started um, in there. I need to get a little bit, there we go, a little bit better lighting here in the shop when I'm working on stuff. But I just haven't made it that far yet. Put the spring on. Uh, like I said, here's where you need like five hands. Make sure your pin is turned how you've got your piece oriented in your vice grips or your brake pliers. And I guess I'm going to have to start using my readers to work up close because I just can't see anything anymore. But you get it started in there and give it a quarter turn twist and it locks in. And that's all that holds those uh, brake shoes on. So we're going to do the bottom. Let me get the bottom pins in and... Um, let me explain that and show you real quick if I can. So you see this piece, um, it's got a notch in it. So the pin sticks through it and then you twist this and it's got little indentions in it. Um, see the pin here. If I can do this where it's in the camera. Slide it in and then turn it and then that locks it. So that's all that holds the the uh, shoes in of course you know orientation i guess and then we've got springs that go down here that keep them pulled onto that and then you've got your spring over here with the adjuster so let me get these bottom pins in and i'll bring you back and we get ready to do the uh the springs down here this isn't the best tutorial video just bear with me guys okay well like i said we got all the pins in got the adjusters um i got this bottom spring on We've got brake pliers. I don't ever use them. Um, I'm going to try to explain this the best way I possibly can. I don't know how the camera's picking it up, but um, the springs sometimes are self-explanatory. Um, I mean, you could probably get this behind there and, you know, that kind of looks, oh yeah, that kind of looks like it hooks. Well, it doesn't lengthwise. And you're not doing what you really want to do with a spring, which is it needs to be pulled at an angle, if you will. So most of the time on brake drum brakes, when you have this type of spring where it comes straight off, usually that's going to hook in behind the brake shoe. Not always, and I'm sure somebody's going to roast me here, but you know, drum brakes are very simple. It looks daunting because of all the the uh, springs and fittings and stuff, but really when you break it down, it's pretty simple. So. Basically what I'm trying to say is when that goes in behind there and, and you pull down on it, see if I can get it back out easy. The top of this spring, that hook, is actually digging into the back of the brake shoe right here and it's pulling off the body of the spring. So you want it in there like so. And then you can see now how much further away we are. So that means the spring is going to have great tension on it. And this this upper one yeah okay i've got it this is a good example now i've got the spring started around there and it's biting on one point but it's barely so when i get ready to flip these vice grips off that spring can very easily pop out so you know you want to kind of put something over this in case it does or get you a screwdriver and go ahead and pry the spring in there i'm not giving very good tutorial advice here because this is not the proper way to do this really let me grab a screwdriver. But we'll show it anyway. So 
so it's kind of like a two-part motion i already had this side right here caught in that groove so when i popped them off i just kept pressure on that so it popped around behind it again not the proper method not the safest way in the world i do have my safety glasses on uh that's it guys i mean that's that's all it is to the to the brake shoes all right so now we're going to try to get the uh brake drum back on there it's not in the best of shape but better than nothing all right so it's tight going on so what we want to do is move this adjuster over here some more all right now we're just going to kind of run the uh adjuster back out to get it somewhat close i should have ran that back in completely before i put it together but personal preference Okay, I went ahead and put the pin in back here for the brake rod itself. I showed you that earlier in the clip, so it actuates. So um, there's an adjustment here, so I'm gonna wait till I get everything tightened up, uh, get the wheels on it, and it will adjust the brakes exactly, get the pedal where it needs to be with adjustment here. But I was gonna show you if I can keep the brake drum on. So we're spinning. I'll mash the brake easy. It stops. Spinning. It stops. So, brake pedal, brake rod, actuator, cam inside showed you, brake shoes. That's it. Let me get situated here and uh, we'll just call this one good. No sense in boring you with the other side on the rear brakes. All right, everybody, I believe we're going to wrap this one up and call it good uh, on the brakes on DAS 3000. Everything went pretty good. Uh, got good pedal, adjusted everything up. Uh, the only thing that I did wrong was uh, in my tutorial, other than it being sketchy and bad camera angles, was I forgot the back retainers on the springs. When I got everything together and got finished, got my little bucket up to have my parts in it, I had four extra spring retainers in there. What in the world? Well, it's been a long time, so I make mistakes. I'm not going to set any of this up to, to do a production session, if you will. It's trial by fire with me. Uh, so sure enough, looked in the book, yep, it calls for four, so pull the drum back off. No big deal, because once the brakes are up there in situ, I just took them off more at a time. But basically, you've got a pin through the backing plate, through the brake shoe, then one of those funny-looking retainers go on, then a spring, then another funny-looking retainer. So, um, you know, it is what it is. But if any of you guys got any questions, don't hesitate getting in touch with me. Um, hopefully, you've enjoyed the series so far. i got a couple more videos coming out on the 3000, and then we're going to probably wrap it up, because... I've got to get some other equipment down here. Um, got to do some work on my little hay rake. Pennies on the dollar. I did order the teeth for it, and I've already got the new belt. And then go ahead and fix those tubes, get it ready for the season. And I'll go ahead and put a disclaimer in there. I don't know if the gooseneck trailer will get axles under it anytime soon or not. Uh, once I get this tractor finished, I'm probably going to have to roll the hay rake down here and a couple other things. I need to work on the hay elevator too. So we'll just see what happens. But stay tuned for couple more videos on this and then we'll get it rolling out of the shop and move on to the next one uh, spring will be here before you know it so really appreciate everybody being here thank you for following on the journey with me all the support and the kind words they really mean a lot to me so we'll see until next time thank you <laughs>